Hello again, do-it-yourselfers. Terry Peterman, the internet electrician, coming to you from here in Guanacaste, Costa Rica. This morning on our morning walk, we walked by my friend's horse barn here and we noticed that the ground wire and the sleeve was laying on the ground beside the pole here. So I gave her a call and asked her if she'd like me to hook that back up for her. And she said, yes, please do. So we're gonna do that. Now, before we do though, we're gonna do some basic safety testing to make sure that there are no faults here that could cause a dangerous situation when I connect this back up. And that being that if there was a problem on the triplex ground here that you see in the background, then this would become the safety relief, thus the reason for grounding things. So it's connected to a ground rod right below here. I'm gonna do some testing to make sure there's no potential difference between the system neutral and this ground wire and the ground rod. And then we'll connect it back up clean up this connection I can see it's all corroded so we'll put some deox compound on there and put it back in and tighten down the screws so let's get started so what I'm gonna do here for safety testing I've got my meter set to volts AC and I hope you can read that I'm having a little trouble seeing with the bright sunlight and I don't know if you can see that on the screen but I'll find out and if not I'll just tell you what the meters reading I want to check here from ground to my neutral on the triplex here and make sure there is no potential difference at all and potential difference is another word for voltage so let's check see my meter there's reading now is 0 0.0006 so that's basically nothing I'm gonna dig my meter lead tightly into this ground wire make sure I got a good connection and then I'm gonna dig it into the neutral here and I've got 0.68 volts AC so that's basically nothing so now what I'm going to do is just check my resistance between that system ground and this ground rod so we'll swap the meter over now to ohms and there's open open line touch them together I got basically 0 0.1 volts bouncing around a little bit but basically no resistance to current flow so zero ohms now again check my ground wire that goes to the ground rod and check it to the neutral system and we have mega ohms of resistance 33 meg hmm okay so i had an extremely high resistance and it should be low like less than 10 ohms to ground or 10 ohms of resistance between the system ground and the ground wire and rod assembly so that was way high 35 meg or something so I opened up this box chased a couple little lizards out of there they don't know how lucky they are because if they would got across the two hot wires up above there the two bus bars coming down from the meter that would have been the end of the little lizards so checking this lug here the neutral lug which is tagged off and bonded to the can of the meter socket here with the 100 amp double pull breaker that's where the ground wire was also attached and that lug is completely seized I can't budge it and the neutral system ground there is loose very loose so I've sprayed this with WD-40 hopefully I can free that up otherwise I'm gonna have to change that lug and uh, re-terminate these properly all right, so I cannot get that lug out of that screw, terminal lug out of that lug there at all. It's seized tight. So there's probably been some arcing and sparking going on in there that's basically welded that aluminum together because I've soaked it with WD-40, I've beat on it, I've put a wrench on my screwdriver and I cannot budge it. So that explains why I had such a high resistance because basically I was checking from here, this neutral on the triplex, and it was in that lug but it wasn't touching anything it was just sitting in there and the ground wire had come out and fallen down so we had no neutral on this system to the barn there and I don't know if they've been using much stuff there but that could have caused them all kinds of troubles with the floating floating neutral there because it was definitely was not connected that's why I had 35 mega ohms resistance because there was no connection up through that lug and going right up into the system neutral on the other side of the meter there so that explains it I've got good voltage other than that from my hot wires on the breaker to neutral right here in the in the main breaker cabinet I've got 
120 volts from each leg to neutral and I got 240 between them but we did not have a neutral connection going to the barn so I've got to somehow get that lug out before I can make a repair here. All right with a little luck and some drilling I was able to drill out that screw out of that set screw out of that terminal lug there and I was able to rob one out of my panel from home so now I'm going to be able to clean up these connections, put some deox on them, and then do some checking and turn the power back on here. So like I've mentioned before, you might have to turn a blind eye a lot of times to some of the stuff that you'll see in third world countries. I've, I did a blog on uh, Mex Electrical a while back on my blog spot page and I talked about some of the bizarre things you'll find. So during this video here, while I was looking for another screw terminal for that lug that I need, to fix up that that uh, little problem. I came over to another buddy's place where his meter is still in place for his lot, thinking I might find another main breaker panel and I could steal a lug out of it. And here's what I find. Now this meter is actually still on. You can see it's all flashing zeros. I think it's a little bit bright out here, but all flashing zeros. But the wires have been caught and those are just live sitting right there nothing but the high voltage fuse on the transformer to stop you from getting a very good shock off of these wires. So there's bare cables hanging out in this box live right off the meter and that's kind of safety gone gone to the wind there or non-existent we might say. So as you can see I found another screw for that lug, that grounding lug, so I've put my grounding conductor, the green one that's connected to the ground rod, along with the neutral from the triplex underneath that lug and tightened it down securely. And now we can just take my meter and do some testing after we turn the breaker on to make sure that all is well. Alright so before I connected my neutral and my ground back to that lug, what I did is I tested for resistance so between my grounding wire that's connected to the ground rod and the lug in the back of that panel which is actually connected to the service ground what I was testing before was actually the load side neutral and because that lug was all corroded and, and pitted and seized up and not connected properly that's why I had that 35 mega ohms resistance so I checked, we had relatively low resistance within the acceptable range, so I connected everything back up. Now I could only pick one or the other to focus on here. So you got the meter and I'm going to show you some testing here now to do. Just between the hot, one of the hot legs, and the neutral now. Make sure my meter's on the right setting. One hot leg and the neutral. 119.4 volts, the other hot leg to neutral and ground, 120, 119, and between the two hots, 239 or 240 volts. So just what we'd expect to find. Now I'm going to just back out the shot here and tell you a little more about uh, this service here in Costa Rica. All right, so I've fixed this up the best I can, and that's something you have to remember. I'm always a little bit reluctant to do videos here in Costa Rica and when we were spending time in Mexico there too because the stuff you find there is just not up to code and you can't really go in there and and tell the people they're doing it all wrong because they've done it that way for years and it boils down to education there's no there's no process here to to license an electrician it's just you are an electrician if you work as an electrician so and it's even like that in some states in the USA so we can't really blame them for that they they uh, do the best they can with the materials they have sometimes. You'll, you'll go into a house, you'll find red conductors for hot, which is fine, but you'll find a red conductor for a ground wire. If that's all the hardware store had at the time, then they'll use a red wire for a ground. And lots of times you'll find a green wire used as a hot conductor or a neutral because that's all they had at the store. So that's the best they could do and you just make do with it. So that's why when you look, look at a service like this, this obviously isn't correct. You've just got the triplex coming down off of this metal pole. It's strung overhead and just tied to the top of this metal three by three tubing. And then it just comes down through a, an open knockout here in the bottom of the meter box, the main disconnect. And that's how they connect it up. And now obviously this should have 
conduit that should have a fitting here with maybe an LR and then another LL and going up the pole with conduit to a weather head and then across to the barn through the air. But things just aren't always done the way they should be. So all you can do when you come into a situation like this is try to make it better. And uh, that's what I've tried to do here. As you see now, I've got the, the conduit sleeve on the ground wire. I strapped it to the, to the pipe here or to the tubing because that's one of the reasons it came out. This is a horse pasture and a horse probably just knocked it off and stepped on it and pulled it out of that connection. So I put a couple straps on it, sleeved it the best I could, put a connector where it goes into the bottom of the panel, a two screw connector, cable clamp, instead of just running it through the hole in the box or a knockout like they had it. So all you can do, do the best you can, fix things up as good as you can with what you have to work with. And that's it. So. Thanks for watching. Um, this is another video from, from the Internet Electrician at electrical-online.com. I'm Terry Peterman. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video, click on that little notifications bell, and that way you're going to know when I release a new video. So thanks again for watching.